Okay, you. Yeah. Um, the next bait we got is something that I've tried to. Uh, let me get windy there, right there. <laughs> um, this is a uh, it's a crankbait. It's a. Uh, um, I think that the thing said it runs three to five foot. So, um, I'll hold it up here for you. There you go. Um, it's by, um, who's this one by? This is a Berkeley. Berkeley. Um, what does it say? Berkeley Digger. Uh-huh. Slow rise, three to five foot, a fourth of ounce. Uh -huh. It's a rattle. Yeah. It's, so let me, let me show you. It's a, it's, it's real slender. It's, it's not so broad. It's, it's not a, what you would, what you call a flat sided but it's pretty it's pretty slim but uh, the principle with these um, you throw this with 10 pound test it's going to run the full five foot maybe you know right around that area and if you get heavier with the line you're running you don't it'll be you know with me working the bank I might throw this on 12 or 15 car uh, floor carbon or uh, monofilament and I'll keep it around more, somewhere around maybe two, three, four foot, because that's usually the depths where I fish. It, it don't get too, too deep. But that's the principle with anything you're going to throw with a crankbait. Um, lighter the line, the deeper it runs, the truer it runs deep. And then um, the heavier the line, the shallower it runs. And you can also manipulate the depth by your rod positioning. Um, lower in the lower in your rod hold if you're holding the rod lower and run you know if you pull it up a little higher you don't want to get out of, of setting the rod you don't want to get out of position because um, if that hits a rock and the principle is this is to get as deep as you can so anywhere between three to five foot I'm gonna try to touch bottom with this and hit and when you hit something you, you kind of pause and as it ease back up sometimes you'll catch those you'll get those strikes so that's the principle with these so i got one more thing and then i'm going to talk about what i did to my poles over the time period and what we uh now if you want this is that the last one i've got this right here okay. uh if you want this you can um you can get online and look these up uh it's under, um, is it still under Mystery Tackle Box? Mystery Tackle Box by the Catch Co. I Catch showed Co. Them a, yeah. Um, now, um, I, uh, I might, you know, get in touch with them, see if I could, you know, talk about their boxes or whatever. But, but anyway, <laughs> what we got here is we've got some. Right now they have free advertisement. Yes. <laughs> This is. These are our, my hook. These are some uh, offset um, worm hooks. Let me show you. They are spear point EWG standard gauge three aught. You got two uh -huh. of them. They both are they both three? Uh huh. Hand me one of them. I'll get it closer to the yeah. to the camera. Maybe. <laughs> they really do a good job. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm going to show you something about these hooks that I, I like. Uh, I try to use these. Anything I get, I use. Most of my uh, EWG hooks, off hooks, most of my hooks come from uh, Catch Co. boxes. Most of them... Mm -hmm. I don't I don't go buy them at the store because I don't do a lot of Texas rigging, um, but I do some. Uh, there are certain times of year I could throw that um, 10, 10 and a half inch uh, Zumo Monster. I'll throw it, and um, but I'm showing you something. This right here is I've noticed this. Oh, you might you won't be able to see it, but I'm gonna show you right there is a keeper it's like a little um like a little poke little uh poke thing right there a little keeper so when you 
when you come into the worm and you turn that and you pull that in there as you pull it to fish with it that's going to dig into your plastic so you it'll get a better bite on your thing on your worm so it don't slide so much so that's one thing about these little hooks right here they're pretty they're pretty neat three three uh three out hooks now that's a good metal that's not a very you know you could probably you know most time from the bank i'm, I'm not fishing heavy line <coughs> um i'm a big monum filament fisherman i did for years because i never had any trouble on bank fishing you know i ain't i'm not like these fellers that you know their living depends on putting them in the boat so that's not what it is but also um so but this year i've kind of branched out and, and trying to do some stuff and so what i've done is um I, I buy most of my, you know, I've got some lose. Now, I had said that I like to use lose bait casters. And the reason that I do that is because they're so much easier to um, take apart. You pull a pin, you click the end, you pull it out, the spool comes out. So uh, I can maintenance my, if I need to put some grease down in there, I've got some spray grease. Um... As far as cleaning them, I try to stick a Q-tip down there when I can and kind of clean around and, and I don't I don't get too crazy in that. But uh, but I that, I like using the lose because with my situation, that's easier to fool with than have to take the whole side of the reel out and you've got stuff everywhere. And I don't like having stuff everywhere. I, I'm you know I just I like that. It's easier for me. Do I fish other stuff? Yeah, I have I've got some. Uh, I've got my, I'll let Wendy look at this right here. This is my, we showed you before, but I've added, uh, I've got a new, that is a Shakespeare, uh, seven foot, medium, heavy, fast tip rod with a Shakespeare bait caster on it. That's an old, that's an old setup. I've got it, Texas rig. And I've got a lose, uh, this is that Shakespeare, and this is a lose, and I put that loose on a Shakespeare medium action uh, rod. Now those two got, now this one, yeah, those two got monofilaments. Now this one is the one that I would do a lot of dragging. This one right here. And I did the maintenance to it this winter. But what I've done is I have put uh, 15 pound fluorocarbon on this one uh, seven foot medium heavy action rod not a not a whole lot of play in the end of it it's 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 a stiffer and uh, but it's a more it's a speed spool a reel it's a little bit bigger but what I did was I have set this up to throw a fish head under spin and I don't have a a real uh, flashy thing on it is that one white mm -hmm, yes. that's a white uh, that is a uh, it's a jerk bait but what I did was I put it on a fish head underspin and so when I'm reeling that it's versatile I can jig it from the bottom pull it up let it flutter down slow roll it but touch the bottom but what I'm I branched out with fluorocarbon this year I'm so I'm gonna try that that's 15 pound that's more of a bigger rod, um, so I'm gonna throw a little bit more, a little bit meatier hooks with this one. That's more of my dragon um, jig rod. Uh, I will, one of these days, I'm gonna get me um, a setup that I like. That one is a, I got that one. And the very first rod that I got uh, that I really, started fishing is this one and I'll show you my other one I've done been through but I so this one this is my Abu Garcia Black Max and this was a present from my oldest son and he got me this for I think Christmas or birthday but he 
And so I've got this one with 12 pound uh, carbon coated line. It's a, it's a coat, uh, kind of like a copolymer. And what I've got jigged this one up, it's 12 pounds, and I've got this with a hair jig. It's got an underspin, but it's a hair jig, uh, caribou skin, or hair on this one. <laughs> so this is something that I will throw. Now this is a fluorocarbon based line, so it's got less stretch, but that's a good hook, so that'll it'll, it'll probably be able to work. It's 12 pounds. But what I've got is on, I've got this on, and I have reeled that up. That's where I need it. So what I've got this here is a seven foot medium heavy moderate. It's not real floppy. Um, but that seven foot, that real, that's a, I use it because it was from my kids, you know. So that's something that people has, well, I've got this kind of reel. Well, this is from a kid, so I'm gonna use this reel. I like it. Um, most people say, well, that's a beginning reel. Well, it, it was, he, he, he bought me that and I'm gonna use it. I don't care, it, it works. And then one of the, uh, one of the rods. Now I'm gonna tell you why I like using this in the way I do it. Is that, yeah, that's the right one. You have to, Give me, man. I got all my stuff here, and I like my stuff in order. I like my corner not to have chaos. It's easier. So, what I have with this one now, this is the one. This is on a Lose Speed Stick. This is a Lose All American. Um, this was the first rod, uh, first reel that I bought during the uh, 2020 COVID. When we got um, uh, stimulus, I bought me this reel because it was loose, and I looked them up, and I was like, "Man, them things come apart." And so <clears throat> this is, and you're, I, I'm not, I'm not taking that because I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> if I take this out, it gets, it's horrible. It gets, you know, if I'm going to change, when I get the change line, I'll get back on it. But this, and uh, it's on a seven foot. It was seven foot. It's more along 610, it's what this is. It's a 610 medium. Um, does it tell on what this thing is, or is that all? Mm -hmm. Have I got it wore off? Medium action fast taper? Yeah, it's a medium fast action. So this has not got a heavy, heavy backbone, but it's even got to see. Now this is what, and the reason I've got this one, uh, 12 pound trilene, big game uh, fishing line. Why is because I use this to throw like rattle traps, uh, some crankbaits, spinner bait, spinner baits. And why I do that is it's because people's like, well, why do you use them on a filament? Well, I set the hook kind of hard. So I'm learning how to, with, with a, with a, 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 a multi, hook bait you really don't got to set it hard you just lean into them you know put a little good jerk to it and because you got you know six hooks surely one i'm going to hook mm -hmm. and so but i put monofilament on that one so i still fish what i fish and um i still like, tend to like wanting to use mono on some stuff some stuff i'm trying to um integrate into the braid um, it, it, the fluorocarbon, I'm trying to get into that because, you know, see how that works. I'm going to give it this summer and work with it. If I don't like it, then I'm going to go back to monofilament. We'll have videos yeah. this summer of you fishing and stuff too. And um, this was a, this was a, um, I went to the store and I was looking for a spinning reel and I ended up, I grabbed the, I guess we grabbed the wrong one, but look at this little fella right here. <laughs> That's a lose. Now this is a six foot six medium uh, light rod. And the reason that I got this set up is it's got a real good fast tip on it. But what I use this for, 
and I've got 10 pound uh, braid to a 12 pound monofilament leader. Sometimes I go fluorocarbon. Most time I do monofilament. This is my Ned rig job. This is what I fish my Ned rigs on. And right now I got a little brown worm on there. This little worm right here, um, that's the reason why I'm trying to expand this year and, and to try some purple and some uh, some brown and purple. Uh, we was fishing. It was uh, getting close to uh, fall. And my wife, Wendy, says, why don't you throw that brown worm on there? That looks like a regular worm. I thought, okay. So, <laughs> so I throwed it, and I caught a three-pound bass, and I said, well, okay. So, and, this, I, and I had to trim. It was a little bit longer. I think it was like four. But I had to snip it. But this size right here would be excellent uh, shallow water in, in spring or early summer. So, um, and if you Ned rig anything, uh, you just got to bite, bite it if you've got whatever you're going to use. If it's so and so long and you want to just, I don't bite them, I cut them. I'm not sticking that in my mouth. Uh, I don't, I don't do that. I, I just, um, I'm not, I don't, I don't know. I don't like the taste of them things. They kind of taste funny. But this was a, I got that one. Now, these two rods I've caught good number of fish on, and I'll tell you why I like these two. This one is what a gift from my Gwen. Now this one is on a Berkeley. Does it have writing on it too, baby? Um, That's a seven foot. Cherry wood, Berkeley. Um, so you got the. It doesn't, I don't see where it's Well, it's, let me show you. It's got a real floppy, it's got a fast tip. But this, I'm in the house, in the rear. In the, this is a Abu Garcia Revo. Spinning rod, a reel. Now, this is a really, I've got 10 pound braid on this one with a 10 pound, uh, and, and most of my, um, most of my leaders are 12 pound monofilament. Most of it's trilene. Uh, but I'm gonna show you, this is a wacky rig. I use this to fish my Cinco's a lot. And I'm going to get into maybe doing some um, uh, Nico rigging with it. But this one, is it's a Mustad worm hook. Um, that is, it's got an outward point right there. This I've caught a lot of fish on this with this rod and reel. But the reason I don't weight it and I use a, a the wacky rig where you put the ring on the, uh, the, the Senko, <clears throat> I use Yum Dinger, but um, so this is what the deal is. If I that little ball somewhere on there, get down there. There you go. Now the reason I've got this ball on here is because if I don't put this on here, I don't see the tip. So when I reel, this will go through the eyelids. Now that's a, that's really a, a, a eyelid, that's a stopper. So that won't go through my eyelids up there. That's the problem that I run into. But this is what I've, wore, I've, I've fished my Senkos on. And um, I've done really good with this rod. This is a really good reel. I mean, I use lose a lot. But now, I like this reel. It's very nice. So, um, plus it's my, my sweetheart bought it for me. And I caught lots of fish on it. Now, the other one, it's yet to be tested. That's my one. And then this one, this is the one that I, I can't wait to use this year. I'm looking forward to using this one. This is the nice one that, this is a Christmas present from my baby doll. And if it wasn't for Gwen, fishing would be horrible. It's the other one, honey. You well, didn't show them. That's the oh, little that's one. that's the little one. Let me lay this here. Yes. I'll fix that later. Because, <laughs> let me just... It's over more. Over, right there. That one? This is the one. That really pretty red one. 
This is the my new lose. I'll let her read off the what it is. It is a Remax. Let me see if I can get it in the camera. Yeah, uh, Red Max Next Generation Abu Garcia. Abu Garcia. I thought this was lose. What, what is this down here? The real. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, it's Abu Garcia. Oh, well, I thought that this was a lose. Obviously, it's not. But this is the same as that Abu Garcia got right we there. We had looked at a lose. Yes. That day, I think is what the. So this is. Over this way a little bit. There. See, I don't even know what I'm fishing with. <laughs> yeah, you do. Um. Now this one, I've got a pretty good leader on it. Uh, I got about a five, six foot leader. But what I'm working with this now, I'm gonna show you something. I'll give a credit to where I learned this. This I learned and saw uh, uh, Bass Pro. Uh, actually, he's a uh, Bass Masters Elite fisherman. His name is uh, Gerald Swindle. I watched him on Wire to Fish, and he's throwing this little rig right here. This is a Tokyo finesse rig, and it has a Nico hook on it. This is a one off and so it's just like the Tokyo, but it's for finesse, and I can um, <clears throat> drag it, or I can set it like this and put it through my, or, or um, band, put a band on something, turn it upside down, Nico rig it, and it's still, the hook, the, it's still there, so I can still bounce it, but, um, but that is a, uh, that is a, um, a fin Tokyo Nico Finesse Rig. And, and I'll, I'll give credit to learning that one from Gerald Swindle on Wire to Fish. So, and this is the one I'm excited using this year because this is a brand new uh, present. And what I'm fishing on this one is a, I'm fishing a, 10 pound braid with a 12 pound monofilament. Uh, I think Clay Dyer fishes a braid to monofilament on his spinning rod sometimes. And so that's, that's what I'm getting ready to do. And so, put this back. Now I'm gonna show you something else on these other two. I'll fix that later. Uh, let me let me get this out. I'm gonna show you in something what I did. I had a lose spinning rod. I'll get both of these out and show you what I'm doing here. I had a lose. This. I, this is what I did the other night. Now this rod right here, you see this rod? This is a, has it got writing on it too, baby? It it's is. a Shakespeare. Let's see. Um, Shakespeare Excursion. Uh, um, has it got a medium? Flip it that way. Sorry. Yeah, it says medium action. Medium action. And it's got a pretty soft tip, see? This lose, I, I bought it three years ago. It's a, isn't this a president? Mm -hmm. Ain't it a lose president? I, I think is what they call so. it. Mm -hmm. And so this fit, this right here caught my, my biggest fish I've ever caught. I was throwing a um, quarter ounce jig with a Fat Albert Grub green pumpkin. Imagine that. And it was the fall. It's on my, um, you can go to my YouTube channel. Um, I'll talk about that later. Or you can go to my Facebook page, and there's pictures Facebook of me. Facebook has the pictures. Yeah. Uh, you can go on YouTube and see me catching this fish. He's a, he go about, I think he, I didn't have my scales then. I think he'd run about six or seven pounds maybe. Uh, it was a fall transition. The water was starting to get low, and we was down on that mat. But um, I caught this same, this is the same rig, uh, rig I had. This rod and this reel had been having issues. Now I'm gonna show you something. 
the other night, <clears throat> I wanted to fish this reel. I don't like losing stuff. I don't like it tearing up. I stripped this reel, this down. I took uh, the spool off. I took the screw out. I took the pin out. Pulled the whole rig out. Got down to the guts of it on the inside of this right here. Um, made sure everything was working right, clicking right. I've taken all this off and I greased everything I could grease. And I got it here in the house last night throwing it around while I was pitching it. And it's working better. So whatever the issue was, I fixed it. So mm -hmm. I can work on some reels a little bit. But, but this one, I've caught a lot of fish on this. And uh, so I've got this set up with 12 pound um, this is either, this is a spool that I had taken off another reel. It was, I had switched line. So this is more than likely a copolymer or it's 12 pound trialing. Big game. Take your pick. I don't know. But it's, but, uh, so that's what I did with that one. I, I, I try to keep my stuff in working order. <laughs> you can ask Wendy, every time I come back from the river fishing, I'm up all, I'm up a good while, uh, Cleaning everything, cleaning everything yeah. up, <laughs> fixing my bag. Uh, I like to be, you know, I like to be nice and neat with what I do. And <clears throat> this is that what I was telling you about. I got this. For some reason, my son didn't want it. So it's a Shakespeare. Some people may say, well, what kind of brand's that? Well, it's, 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 a, it's a fishing rod, and I like to fish. Mm -hmm. And so he, um, I got this Shakespeare bait caster from him and I've taken this apart. Now this comes apart like the lose. You unscrew this pin right here, that pin right there. You unscrew that pin, pull that, this unsnaps, the whole unit comes out. So now what I do is, this is a seven foot, does this have writing on it too? That's the Shakespeare excursion rod. It, it's it's just, just like okay. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing, but it's a casting rod where that's a spinning rod. Uh, it's seven foot. It's got a good fast tip on it. But what I've got with this one, this is, what I put on this? Uh, monofilament. 12 pound. But I've got this set up with a Texas rig. I, I do fish some Texas rig. That's a pretty good hook. That's a, about a, it's not a light hook, but it's not a heavy hook. So that's a good in between. It's got enough that that's monofilament can pull it. And this is eight, an eight um, bullet sinker. It's a little lighter. I've got a bead to keep it off my line, but it's a little lighter. So as it falls, it don't fall as fast. So it gives my tails on whatever I'm using a little play. Do I peg it? No, I don't peg nothing really. I've got some pegs and I know how to work them, but I don't. I just don't peg nothing. Um, I might peg something and, and when it gets a little grassier, but but this, you know, people's like, well, it, that might not be high dollar, but I've caught fish on it. And it was one of my kids and he's like, well, you know, I got this, so I fish it. Um, so, this is a, um, uh, I don't even know, it's, it's a, all, all I know is it's a Shakespeare, and that's Shakespeare rig, and it's Texas rig, and I use it. But I'm going to tell you what, I like them when they come apart, I can fix them better. That's why I like to use lose and those. But these are, these, these rods, uh, they're ready um, to go fishing. But I'll tell you what, <clears throat> I told my wife, I said, my idea of a rig that I really would like to fish would be a, um, a seven foot three, medium heavy, fast, extra fast tip, uh, lose, I guess it'd be a speed stick of some kind, and a BB1 Pro six eighth of one uh, bait casting reel. Now that's a setup that I would like. I'd like to, I, I, I told Wendy, I said, I think that's something I'd like to get someday. Um, Cause that's, you know, I, I fish a lot on the bank. So I have to have, I don't fish many short rods. I gotta have something I can throw. 
seven foot or greater. And uh, I try to get it far down the bank and I do my fan casting all the way around. And so um, that's, uh, that's what we're getting ready to go. I don't know, you know, around here, down here in uh, Ray County, uh, the Chickamauga Lake, uh, it's up a lot of the rain. Mm -hmm. It's it's up. Um, if you've got any comments on that, um, anybody would like to comment, you can go to my YouTube channel um, or my Facebook. I'd like comments. Uh, you know, I, I'm not fished a lot. I, one time in March, me and Wendy, uh, it had rained and the water was up. It wasn't really time for them to let the water up for the summer and spring um, levels, but the water was up and I had went out to a place and was throwing a uh, um, rattle bot. Um, I can't remember who makes them. Um, but anyway, I had got it in the box and um, it was called hot sauce. And I just, we went and there was a lot of structure that really was still exposed, but water was up around it. So I just, we went out to a little dock and I was throwing it and I was really surprised. I caught a three pound bass. It was real light colored cause it'd been deep, but I caught that it had come up in the, he had come up in the, the water had came up. So he had come up and I was throwing that rattle bot, uh, rattle trap, uh, lipless crankbait. And I was solely surprised. I was like, well, you know, so if the water's up, uh, you know, bank fishing, do those bass, tend to come up into that or are they still out, you know, um, I don't know. Uh, most time I don't really get to go fishing till somewhere in April, May when the water's up. But, you know, um, if I could find better places to bank fish, it'd be different. But when they get up there about that time around here, I can really catch, I catch a lot of good stuff off of June bug, worms, lizards, um, I, I, I like catch a lot of stuff off of Ned rig, smaller stuff, but I do throw the rattle traps now and the crankbaits. I didn't for a while because it was a little tedious, six hooks, and I couldn't see real good how, how to run it down in there. So uh, I'm kind of broadening, and Wendy kind of helps me through. I, I get it, and I'm, she helps me find the hooks, and I get my pliers, and... And then that's another thing I need to get me is a good pair of fishing pliers. I got some old needle noses, but they do the job right now. So, um, but that's that's all today. I just want to unbox that and show you what I modification. I put some floor carbon on two of them and monofilament on the rest. I fish braid on all my spinning reels except for that other one because it's always had monofilament on it. But them other ones, them, the lose and the two Abu Garcias have got 10 pound braid with leaders. Um, and so I'm set up to, uh, when it's time to go fishing. So, uh, um, now I'd like to invite everybody to, uh, I think you have, you can, uh, subscribe, 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 like this, these videos, like my video, subscribe, subscribe my channel, my channel. <laughs> Then uh, go to Facebook and, and like your page. Yes, and and the Facebook one is PGA, PG, <laughs> PGH. No, PJH. PJH fishing. fishing. Um, is that twenty twenty? <laughs> no. no, you don't. It don't matter all that. PJH. I'm fishing. a little new. <laughs> you have to excuse me. I'm a little new about all this stuff. Uh, you know. Uh, I'm still learning. I'm still learning how to talk all that lingo because I want people to like it. I want the people to. Uh, subscribe to my channel follow me um, I try I try to put stuff on but you know bank fishing you know and, and you can get stuff when you get stuff I get this every month and I should have thought about that but I'm gonna try to do that every month when I get this or I get something new or uh, and then when I get to go fishing I'll take y'all along with me on some of my trips but uh, but that's the main thing I wanted to uh, discuss today and um, um, so I really wish that you would, uh, you know, I just want you to experience what it is for a person. Uh, I listened to Clay on the book and how he, um, how God blesses him to do what he does. And, and so God blesses me to do what I do. Um, 
and and the guys that we that you know I'm following, I'm, I'm friends with, um, you know, I do a lot of following. Uh, and it's nothing against everybody. I just I'm a Christian man. I'm a preacher. Uh, I'm an ordained minister. I preach the gospel. I love Jesus. I love God. I love the Spirit of God. I love the things of the Lord, and I love to see these things. Uh, and people manifest them in their lives. I love to watch people. I like to watch Ott and Ott Defoe and some of these other Christian men, uh, Clay. Um, there's another guy, um, Clay Dyer and um, uh, Mark Rose. I like these, and Andy, or his name's Andrew Montgomery. I, I follow some of these guys that, that promote Christ. Uh, they're my brothers. We all love Jesus, and, and I'm trying to... Uh, Get to know these these gentlemen, uh, Art Defoe, man. That's the reason why, you know, not because of that camera. It was because every time he caught a fish, he thought he thanks God. So does Clay. Um, I do that because it's 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 harder for some of us than other people. So when I do catch a fish, praise God, because you know, it's I can't see fish, can't see them top the water. So what I'm doing is I'm fishing Holy Ghost. You know, Holy Spirit of God, which, what do I do? What, what, what do I fish today, Lord? Will this bait be good? That bait be good. I ask God because he knows they're his critters. He made them. So I'm just trying to catch them, hold them up, grin real big, because I won that game. And and there's a lot of times I don't win the game. There have been times last year them fish wouldn't bite. I couldn't find them. I've went. And come home and just told Wendy, I was like, well, I ain't going back fishing because this is horrible. <laughs> and it wouldn't be two days later where would we be? Right back at the river fishing, slinging, and casting. So that's that's the whole principle of this. But I, I'd like to thank Ott Defoe for, for sending me that. Um, I'm going to get this uh, SD card put in it. And I'm going to start uh, cranking it up and using it. Uh, but that's a real blessing. And I thank him for that. And I hope he sees this. Um, I really hope he sees that uh, I'm appreciative, man, and I'm appreciative that Clay Dyer reached out to me. He, he didn't have to, but he did. Um, you always, you know, give back. That's what I try to do. I just want people to see that they would enjoy this, that, you know, and I can't wait to catch a fish this coming year and show y'all the principle and show how me and Wendy work. But I, I'm, I want you to like my channel. Uh, comment on my channel. Subscribe. Subscribe to my channel. And then go like your page. Go on like my page on Facebook. <laughs> and Wendy, share it. Share and share, it please Facebook. share it. Um, <laughs> I'd like to say hello to. Um, um, I need to know Patty and Mark's last name. Um, Edelman. Edelman. That's how you say it. Uh, <laughs> and and I'm sorry. That's. Uh, uh, Patty was a. Uh, she was married to my dad, and he died in 2015. And she still, she's still your mom. Yeah, she's still my stepmom. She loves us. She comes visit. She keeps in touch. And Mark's a big fisherman. He's and a bonus dad. Yeah, he is. He we can talk fishing. Um, he's the one that introduced me to Clay. He got in touch with Clay, and so me and Clay's kind of been, you know, when we get a chance to. I know the season's coming up for those guys. Uh, they start in February. Uh, the Opens and the um, MLF and the Bassmasters, they all start, you know, in early spring, mostly you call that winter time around here. <laughs> but uh, I thank everybody. that and, 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 and come along for the ride. I think you'll like it. Before I go, the one thing that I told the Lord that I, that I, um, I like to do and uh, I want to do is I want to tell everybody this. Uh, Jesus is the Lord. God is everything. And the Holy Spirit, which the Bible calls him the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit that dwells in us, he is the one that teaches us. And the one thing I want to say is that as a preacher of the gospel, I, I would always say this. I'm going to try to do this every time I get on here. If you don't know Christ, today would be a good day to know him. He died on the cross. And three days in the tomb, he rose. And he justified us back to God with what he did. Through the cross, we have found uh, salvation. And we have been delivered from death, poverty, and sickness by Christ Jesus. 
And so Hebrews 10 says, uh, uh, Romans 10 says that if we believe with our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, we're saved. And so when you when you get on here, I can't do this unless I um, give God the glory. These other men that I watch, they give God the glory. So I'm a preacher of the gospel. So I'm gonna give God the glory with everything I do. And and people says, well, you're blind. Ain't God a healer? Yes, He's a healer. But God has a plan, and he has um, everything in his hand. God's in control. I'm not. I'm a follower. I follow Christ. I'm in the spirit of the Lord, and I walk with him. And on his appointed time, he'll do what he needs to do when that time comes. But in the meantime, like Clay, we still going to promote Jesus, and it doesn't matter. You know, we're still, this is how we are until God does something otherwise, we have faith in the Lord, and he can do it. But God has a greater plan, and sometimes men have to step out of the way. Let us step out of the way, and let us be in the Spirit. So I just wanted to uh, get on the line. I hadn't done that in a few days, and uh, I got that box today. I've been waiting on this. Uh, that weather screwed up everything. It was all messed up. and Because I usually get these boxes early in the month, and I just got this today. <laughs> so um, I hope you all like this. And like I said, please like and come. Join me and my Wendy. Um, I can't do this without my Gwen either. I want to tell her that. She is my, um, like, it's funny. We watch Clay and his wife. She films and she's there for him. And, and Wendy's the same thing for me. She's here for me. She's the love of my life. She helps me. She's not a fisherman. She don't really care for fishing, no. but she loves me, and that's a passion I have. But when it comes to God, he's first, then my Gwen, then my family, then fishing. And and my pastor, uh, Mama Dale, she's my family and, and my church family. But my pastime, my, my um, thing that I like to do, other than weight lift, is fish. That's my thing. So... Um, Wendy makes it go for me. If it wasn't for her, I'd be in the water. And and sometimes I still get in the water. Uh, uh, when the water's up, I'll, I'll be walking and I won't pay attention. She'll be like, hey, you know you're in the water. <laughs> well, I'm just, I ain't walking on the water. I'm walking in the water. I'm just saying, <laughs> but you know. So uh, I hope you enjoy this. I like to keep it live. You know, we, we like to cut up. Um, this, this don't define me. This makes me stronger. Okay? That's what it's about. It's about enduring with the Spirit of God, persevering, pressing, overcoming, and, and, and being a blessing. I want to be a blessing to y'all. I want you to be blessed to say I like to watch Jason and Wendy. They, they good folk. Uh, we're a good old boy. I'm a good old boy from the country. But, uh, but I love the Lord, and, and but Miss Wendy, she's everything to me. She helps me. And when I do my Facebook Live things for church or, or I've got something God's got on there for me to do, she's, she's there with me. She does it all. She's my, she's my everything. And I just want to thank her for being that for me. And uh, Clay's got his wife, and she's a good one, man. It, 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 it takes, takes strong people to have to walk alongside people that, that you know, we battle. But God is, God is faithful. And I just wanted to share that with you. I'm going to talk about the Lord. That's what it's about. But I, I just want to let you in my world of fishing for a little while. And uh, but that, that's all I have tonight. And I'd just like to say uh, God bless her. God bless you. And uh, God bless that you find Christ tonight. You know, give it a thought. Because someday he'll be here. He's coming back and we don't want to be left behind. So on behalf of PJ... H, fishing. <laughs> See you again sometime.